I'm Jim Gordon and you're watching Market One Minute. I am joined by Mark Jarvis. He is the President and CEO of Giga Metals Corporation. Mark, thanks for joining us. Well, it's nice to be here. Great. Let's jump right in. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the Giga Metals project. Uh, well, our Turnigan project uh, in north central British Columbia is a massive resource of uh, sulfide, nickel, and cobalt. Um, we have a 43101 uh, compliant resource estimate uh, where we've got more than 4 billion pounds of nickel uh, and 250 million pounds of cobalt in the measure plus indicated category. Uh, plus, in the inferred category, we've got another 4 billion pounds of nickel and 250 million pounds of cobalt. That's a truly massive resource. And uh, it's, it's uh, low grade, open pitable, low strip ratio, um, just a really good looking project, uh, particularly for this stage in the market cycle. Now, can you talk a little bit about the team you've got at Giga Metals? Well, we've got uh, an excellent in-house mining engineer, Tom Milner, with a, with a long background of bringing mines into production. Um, we're using Chris Martin uh, uh, for metallurgical work, and, and, and we're currently using Hatch uh, to, to do some internal scoping studies for us, uh, but ultimately uh, to lead to a pre-feasibility study that we're targeting for the third quarter of next year. Um, on our board, we've got uh, uh, some, you know, some very good people. Um, uh, Lyle Davis is the chairman of the board. And he's just, a, just a, a very good citizen. He used to work for the uh, Vancouver Stock Exchange in the old days, chasing the bad guys. Um, and uh, we've got uh, John Hikeaway, who is a battery metals expert. He speaks at conferences all over the world, and he's got a business going advising the end users of battery metals how to source materials. Um, and we've also got Phil Robinson, who is uh, on the investment committee for Pala Investments, which is a $3.7 billion uh, private equity group that's, uh, that is invested in our company. Uh, what can you tell our uh, viewers about your current drill program? Well, we've been uh, drilling for a couple of months now. Um, we've done all the infill drilling. We've got two starter pits and uh, uh, between them, uh, we only had inferred resources. Uh, the starter pits are all measured plus indicated. And so we've done the infill drilling to um, lift those inferred resources to the measure plus indicated category so we can take the project to pre-feasibility. Um, and then we've also drilled infill holes in the starter pit areas just to get metallurgical sample because we're doing extensive uh, metallurgical test work. Um, and we did uh, a less exploration drilling this summer than, than I had hoped, uh, simply because there weren't helicopters available. There were so many fires in northern mm -hmm. BC, you couldn't get a helicopter. So uh, we've saved some of the exploration excitement for next mm -hmm. summer. Uh, can you talk about the significance of class one nickel to gigametals? Well, nickel is a bifurcated market. Um, most nickel production, in the world, more than half is what's called ferro-nickel. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, nickel from clays that uh, contains nickel and iron, uh, plus impurities, and that's solely targeted for the stainless steel market. Uh, if you wanna produce something that can be used in batteries, you need to have something that is economically easy to upgrade to class one nickel, which is 99.8% purity or better. Uh, and that's what we've got. You, you know, really the two sources for class one nickel are sulfide deposits, which is what we have. Um, and then there's high pressure, high temperature acid leach projects, HPAL, um, which are very, very tricky. They can produce class one nickel, but the uh, capital cost per unit is very high. That's our competition. And I think that uh, we're certainly competitive with HPAL projects. And I have a, a last question. I know this is very exciting news for you, if the viewers don't know about this. Can you talk a, a bit about the net smelter return sold to Cobalt 27? Well, you know, uh, in the current market for uh, you know, mining stocks, it's getting more and more difficult to raise equity capital, particularly at uh, prices that, you know, that the company would like. Um, and so these innovative financing uh, methods have, have developed. So Cobalt 27, uh, 
which is an amazing company, I think. It's only been around for about oh, less than two years, and they've raised something in excess of $700 million with uh, institutional investors to become a pure cobalt investment. Um, after extensive due diligence, they decided they wanted to buy uh, you know, a net smelter return from us. So we sold them a 2% net smelter return for a million dollars US in cash, plus 1.125 million shares of Cobalt 27. And so we've really tied our fortunes to Cobalt 27. We you know, are really happy with the management of Cobalt 27 and um, you know, that's our source of financing. We think we're well funded uh, to get to pre-feasibility mm -hmm. and beyond. Mark, thanks for joining us. Very good, thank you.